Hi guys, and thanks for watching again. Here it is, the LED you programmed to do different patterns than the default high speed patterns on steroids. And as you can see, all the LEDs are lit right now, which creates this amazing effect. It's a little flickery of course, because of the multiplexing, but they are lit, which is great. Well, let me first turn on the light. At full brightness. Getting it to do different stuff than the patterns it came with was not easy. Not easy at all. Let me explain the pain I felt during my experience programming this LED cube. If you don't care about that and just want to see some examples on this cube, you can skip to the time written over here probably, somewhere. But if you run into any problems programming your own cube, I advise you to listen to this story because it felt like I encountered every single possible problem while trying to program this. So here we go. First, I tried using this USB to TTL adapter. There it is. Which came with another programmable LED kit which I bought from eBay. And getting this to work under, under Windows 10 was terrible. When I plugged it in for the first time, Windows recognized it as the prolific USB to serial adapter, but it mentioned also that the device did not work correctly. So I went searching on the internet and came across a site which offered an older driver for this device, which strange enough works for Windows 10. But only when I unplug it and then plug it in again, one time. So. When I got this working, I wanted to program this LED cube. So I found the GitHub page from a guy named Tomasas, which of course I put a link in the description. I cloned his Rust story and found all kinds of tools over there. And of course, I did not read the readme file. Why should I? So I started trying out all the different tools and nothing worked. And that's when I started reading the readme file. It stated that I should first Flash the new firmware on the STC chip, which is over here. See if I can get any focus. So that's what I tried. I connected the LED cube to the USB adapter and plugged the adapter in. Windows 10 recognized the adapter and it appeared on the list of available COM ports in the STC application. So that was great. I selected the new firmware and started flashing. And then it said, has something like doing a handshake and that's where it hang it stopped and that is the point where i began to doubt the quality of this usb adapter and ordered some new ones from ebay i ordered the exact same one of course I or and i ordered this one and after waiting a couple of weeks they still did not arrive so i bought one one from a dutch shop which is currently plugged in so you cannot see it um, which arrived the next day of course, but all I tried, I cut the exact same results with like this one. I even tried the application which allowed me to create new patterns, but all that did was light this column and some LEDs dimly over here, flickering at the rhythm of the current baud rate of the COM port. And days later, I read the README file again, and there was a sentence which I did not read before, which said that I should power off the STC chip after starting the process of flashing, and then power it on again. So that's this button over here. So I did. I pressed the download or flash button, turned it off, turned it back on again, and at least it, it, it looked like it was doing something. It was displaying all kinds of messages, but now it said uh, some, some weird message like, Download failed, new software using, or some weird message like that. And that's when I gave up all hope. <clears throat> a couple of days gone by, I'm sorry, and I, had to, and I just had to try it again. But now with the Dutch USB adapter, which is currently plugged in, and suddenly everything went perfectly, and by a miracle, and the STC chip was flashed. I almost could not believe my eyes. So I turned off the cube. Let me pause the animation, turn it back on, and then it started doing this. Don't know if you can see that. Let me turn off the lights again. I'm 
apply some 3D effect. And that's all it does from now on. Turn the lights back on. Well, well, no, no let leave it, leave them off like this. So I felt like I bricked my cube somewhat. Now I started the pattern programming application again, which came with the bus story, and it still didn't work. So I went back to the internet and found another tool written in Java called 3D8 space TF animation editor. I'm running a 64-bit Core i7 processor, so I started the 64-bit batch file and it said that it could not find any COM port. So <laughs> that was kind of weird. So I tried the 32-bit version and it worked fine, strangely enough. I set the application to 9600 bouts or BPS and started some examples and that's where I'm currently am. I can make all kinds of animations now and load them directly onto the cube, which is nice. For example, let me see if I can open an animation I made. Let's press the play button. There it is. It's currently set at one second interval for each animation frame. But I don't know if you can see that on camera. I'm going to try a little bit of light. Oh, there you could see it. There you can see a little bit is the letter B, of course, the first letter of my name. So that was pretty amazing for me after all this pain. So let me, let me try some other examples. Well, well, why not turn off the light again? Let's see. Open. Uh, Example 11. Oh, it already went playing, so I change the interval time to 20 milliseconds again and press the play button. And all the LEDs go from one side to the other side in full 3D. And there are all, all kinds of loads of animations, and there are lots of animations available on the internet. So, yeah, I finally fixed what I was aiming for, and that was programming my own animations. The only downside right now <coughs> is that it cannot operate standalone anymore. I cannot program animations into the ROM and leave it running standalone. It always needs a connection with a USB or COM port from now on. So <coughs> I guess I need to write my own firmware if I want to do that. So that's what my story is about programming the LED cube. If one of you guys is interested in writing a new firmware, let me know. I'm very interested in, in trying it out. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.